right guys, this is another update of the house build. As you can see, we've got spray foam insulation in here. And uh, the spray foam up top is gonna be visible. We're gonna have sheetrock up to the 10 foot, these are 10 foot sidewalls. So we'll have sheetrock all the way around up to that point. And see over here, we've got the shop. Of course, that's gonna be sheetrock. All the way, we've got a little door, a little uh, closet right there. Anyway, so the door will open here. This will all be sheetrock. Uh, I'll have a little split system in here to keep this uh, separated. I didn't want to put it part of the HVAC system of the house. Power panel is done except for four breakers. I had to order four 20 amp single pole breakers because Lowe's didn't have them. Local uh, distribution places locally didn't have them. So I ended up having to order it. I found it on Lowe's. They're like five bucks each. But uh, those are hard to find right now. So other than that, the panel is done. I mean, that's like 10 minutes worth of work and that one will be knocked out. But this will be where I do YouTube videos. Uh, when we do our, get back to our instructional videos after this house is done. That's all gonna happen in here. I'll have like a little desk and a little shooting area up in here. Got the window where I can look out and see the river. So let's go ahead and check out the house. Of course, as you guys know, we've got the Devastator alcoves right there. All right, and we've already been over a lot of this. You know, this is the third update video, but we've got a little chair to take your shoes off and hooks and all this stuff going up here. But this is the insulation. So now the net and bat has been uh, blown in. When y'all saw it last, it was just the netting, but you can see the netting right here. We'll go over that in a minute, why there's a hole there. But, uh, so this is it. I mean, this is far better than uh, like rock wool or just regular R13. Now there's a kind of this idea that rock wool is the best thing to use in sound walls. And that is so far from the truth. Rock wool is not really, it's no better than R13. If you look at the coefficient specs or it's absorption coefficient, it's no better. I mean, it's, it's minute down at 125 Hertz, but it comes down to how well can you put it in the wall? How is, how well is it applied? Are all the little holes sealed? I mean, you, you in contact with the sides of all the studs, the wires, you know, if you can't do all that, don't waste your money on rock wool. Cause I'm, you know, just get R13. You know, that stuff over there is way cheaper. I know this rock wool says it's for sound. Well, you know what, R13, if you look on the bag, it says the same thing. It's just, uh, it's advertised, rock wool is advertised much better. So there's just weird following that that's what you need to get. But this is the stuff right here. I mean, this wall is full of wires, speaker wires. It looks like spaghetti. And I'd like to see someone try to get rock wool in that wall and make it worth a flip. I mean, it would be falling apart. It would just be a mess and would just wouldn't be very effective at all. We've got a good five and a half inches of insulation in that wall. That's a staggered stud wall. I've already gone over the staggered stud wall in the previous two videos. You know, you've seen me do the little test where I hit one side, doesn't transfer to the other. You know, kind of the theory behind the decoupling and how it works. But uh, yeah, this is, this is it right here. The best insulation you can get inside of a double wall or a staggered stud wall, anything like that. And the price isn't that bad, really. Uh, I mean, that theater in here probably cost me $1,000 to insulate the whole theater. And when you're trying to, you know, do sound containment in a room, you know, of course, the structure that you use or the framing method, that's going to be what really does most of it. But you don't want to skimp on something like the insulation. All right, and this is our oldest daughter's bedroom. Of course, she's got the best view, probably even better than the master bedroom. Uh, let's see. This right here is a double wall. This, the uh, shop, my shop, and the recording little area for YouTube that's all on the other side of that wall. So I wanted to make sure that it was really nice and soundproof. So we've actually got two walls there spaced about half an inch apart. The other side has spray foam. Now spray foam, again, it's advertised as, you know, sound absorption, the sort absorptive. It's really not. If you go up there in the attic where there's all this spray foam, you're gonna notice it doesn't sound anything like, say, the closet where we have the R13 batting facing you, where it's like a magnet that just absorbs all the sound. It doesn't do that up there. So 
while it does help with sound a lot because it seals everything and it does have some absorptive qualities it's not as good as the r13 so that's why i've got the spray foam on one wall and then on the outer wall we've got r13 right here so this should be a very very quiet space or a room even when i'm in there working you know got the saw going or listening to music making a video whatever so we got that going on there let's go look outside the back patio is done basically so uh i cut grass last night so y'all may see some little spots i missed uh i cut until like eight o'clock way after dark the moon had it lit up pretty well so i was able to keep cutting didn't fall in any holes or didn't fall in the river so i'm still here so we still got some touch-up paint to do you'll see like right there some touch-up paint uh we got touch up all over the place but that's like an hour's worth of work to touch it up we got the paradigm 370s in and later we're actually going to put a pool out here we'll I'm talk about that in a minute i got a really cool idea some people may think it's cool some people might be like oh you're a redneck but we're going to go over that in a minute but we'll add some more for the left and right because exterior you know that it's uh, common to do a raise so i'll add some more down the road now this ceiling if you look at that it's actually siding the prices of plastic like have gotten crazy the siding really hasn't gone up i don't know why most wood products have but vinyl siding was going to cost me like 30 percent more than putting this up and this is like a wood composite siding that we use all around the house called smart side it's kind of like the cement board hardy board it's just the the wood composite version of it but uh, we actually like the way it turned out and i think it looks a lot better than if we'd have gone with like a beadboard vinyl siding and like i said it was just way cheaper so we didn't have a choice we just had to do it and uh, me and the kids actually put that up me the wife and the kids we uh my wife cut it and i was up on the scaffold and had a kid holding one side and we nailed the other side on and or i nailed it on and got after it we're going to clean some of those trees out like this spot here looks good the rest of that you know now that summer's here and the, the leaves are in you can really see it's kind of covering up the river so most of those are going to come out i'm gonna this week or next week i'll drill some holes in a bunch of those trees to kill them you know drill some holes put some roundup in water mixture in the holes so they don't get any bigger and that way uh this fall i can get around to cutting them and dragging them out of here so but the idea with the pool is you know the intex pools they have the 16 by 32. now here's our last house we didn't really want to put the money or invest thirty thousand dollars for an in-ground pool and also we didn't like the fact that they're so deep like you you know you you're swimming half the time half the pool you can't even stand up in when we get in the pool you know if you want to do laps you know if you got 54 inches of water you can do laps all day long it's 32 feet long but you can stand up everywhere the kids can play it was just a lot more fun to us versus having something with a deep six or seven foot deep end so if i could get an in-ground that was like five feet deep all the way across that would be perfect but then there's also the price involved so what we did on youtube i found all these foreign sites and they were using these pools and these are these you know companies and they're embedding them in the ground digging a hole and they make sure the water can drain and then they build you know these decks around them and they just looked awesome so here's what i did at the last house and i mean really we loved it now i did wish it would have been level with the concrete and we can actually do that here so the plan is to dig out the dirt kind of pull it that way compact it down real good i'll have to build a little head wall down there and then i'll probably get some concrete this time and put a couple inches of concrete and then i'll use like that foam board people use in uh like house sheathing and stuff like that we'll lay that down on the concrete and then we'll put the pool on top the little foam board is just something i saw online where they did the same thing concrete with foam and it gave you like a little pad when you're walking of course, a lot of y'all probably could care less about a swimming pool, but that's my idea back here. And we're also going to screen this in because summers in Louisiana are horrible with mosquitoes. And that way we can open the doors and it'll be kind of like an outdoor area. We're up on this hill and it's always windy up here. So it'll be nice to let the breeze through the house. All right, now we're back inside. So we already know this right here is going to be a 4.1 uh four atmos system no center channel we've gone over that in the last one so you guys already know what's going on there and of course we don't have a place for a left surround so it's going to go up there on the ceiling it's an angled paradigm this whole system is a pro system paradigm pro system 
we've got a 30 degree angled Atmos speaker that's gonna go up there, but we're gonna use it instead of for Atmos, we're gonna reflect it off of the ground back to the seats for a surround. And we're gonna do some testing and some experimentation moving it back and forth. And that should sh shift the sound up and down when we go back and forth this way. So we'll have someone sit in the seat, get that nailed perfectly where it sounds like it's coming from where it should. And then I'm gonna install it. And once I get that down, I'll actually start using that in room plans because sometimes I'll get a room plan where we have an open concept room like this. Usually the theaters that I do, the plans I get are dedicated, but not all the time. All right, and of course, this is the washroom. Washroom dryer there. And we've got this duct right here. This is actually for the oven vent. The inspector got me on that one. We don't do a lot of frying stuff, so I was... You're supposed to have like a solid or a smooth pipe for that six inch duct. And I try to get away with using that and he caught me. So anyway, I'm having to replace it. Not a big deal, but that's what's going on there. Give me something to do while I'm waiting for shoot rock. All right, kids bathroom here. My youngest daughter's bedroom here. So not much to see, just a lot of spray foam right now. And we've already gone over the master bedroom. So if you guys have seen the other updates, you already know what's going on. So we're going to hit it real quick. We've got a floating ceiling in here. A uh, tray ceiling was kind of my, actually was my idea. We'll see how it looks once the room is done. So the bed's going to be over there. We're going to have a, well, what do we have in here? A 4.1.2 Atmos system. Bed's going to be here. Ceiling is going to be right there. It's going to drop down. And the entire bed layer has been tilted so that our sound is anchored to the TV. We don't want our mains over here anchored, you know, well below the TV, that would be goofy. So everything has been tilted. We've got our surrounds here, one surround there, and we've got our Atmos top fronts are gonna be right up here. So that's gonna be it. And of course we've got all of our gear. This is gonna come down here, our receiver, uh, just whatever you know, for the TV and for the audio system. And also to run the zones, we've got a couple of zones. Uh, we've got one zone going in the bathroom, master bath. Also got a zone outside and one in the kitchen. You know, we're gonna have a, different, a few different receivers, one in here and one in the living room that'll have Heos. And uh, I know Heos is not super fancy, like a whole home distribution, you know, that you would have in a closet that goes all through the house. But I mean, it works. It works extremely well. I mean, the layout for Heos is fantastic. All the different rooms that you have zones for, you can play anything to, through any to any zone. They're already powered by the receiver. I mean, it's just a it's a no-brainer. Things are changing. Technology is getting so much easier for the end user to just do themselves. All right, and of course our master bath. We've already been over this, but you can kind of see this in here. We got the six body jets right there. We've got the 16 inch rain head going up there and there's the shower diverter valves. I mean, it's, it's a bad, I cannot wait to use this system. Bad to the bone system. I mean, at least it looks that way. I, I just can't wait to use it. Stuck in a, in a camper for 18 months. I am so ready for it. But if you look in the description, everything I'm using in here, talking about that'll be in the description, including the shower head. We've got the smart switches like this one right here. This is a glass touchscreen switch with fan light the fan lights the tray lights the can lights all operated here that's it's like 25 dollars for a smart switch that works with alexa so we can be in the bed here and say alexa turn you know the tray lights on or turn turn the master light on or we can tell it to turn the living room light on because we've also got the same thing going on in there all right and here's the kitchen of course we've got the movie room staggered stud wall right there with the net and feel that's the fridge right there. You can see we inset it. Now this is a 12 foot wall. That's why that fridge looks so small. It's not a, it's not a tiny fridge, just kind of a tall, tall room. But uh, so that's gonna be pushed into the wall so it doesn't stick out. I'm sure everyone knows, you know, a fridge usually sticks out like a foot into the past the countertop. So that's not gonna be the case here. Got a, a, a propane stove going right there. Of course our sink's gonna be centered on the window. And then right here, we're gonna have an island. I I think it's 10 by four with some bar stools on the front right here. All right, 
and we've already been over a lot of this but again security system it's like 500 bucks up there is the control panel for it where all of the wires every window has a wire that goes up there every door has a wire that goes up there and they're on their own zones it's touch screen it's vocal so if any door opens we know exactly what door has opened any uh, window opens we know you know little jimmy's window open you better go catch them we know it's going to tell us and we can program it to tell us whatever we want i mean you could actually say your kid's name window is open so uh one thing we didn't go over on the other video because i forgot we got a six foot ceiling fan going right there in this room and the box is like right there but anyway this was going to be a rotary fan speed switch but those are hard to find i did find one for the back patio so on the outside we have a, a speed selector for all the fans but most of them nowadays don't have the second wire for the fan speed it's only one hot wire going up to the fan and they come with a remote so you're stuck using a remote which i'm not too happy about that but so i already had the box here i already have power here so i'm going to put a recessed outlet and that way i can put a tablet with its own little charger and it'll be recessed so it's flush against the wall and on that tablet we'll have you know 24 7 we'll have our security system our monitors or our, our uh, security cameras Oop, look at there goes a barge it's kind of cool being on the river you get to see all the stuff being uh, you know the river's actually really active see that tugboat right there right now he's going down you know down with the current towards the gulf when he's coming up especially when the river's moving i mean he's getting it but he's barely moving i mean they're just burning some fuel right now he's coasting pretty good it's pretty cool how they get those long barges and they just kind of coast them you know we got a bend right here and they just kind of come on it's almost like what's that fast and furious you know where they're doing the the uh drifting looks like he's drifting and it's pretty cool all right anyway so we've got like a 1400 foot long driveway we have no clue when somebody pulls up this way our phones will ding when the camera sees something so will this tablet will ding if we're in the living room or kitchen we can just glance over there see what's going on or we can pull our phones out you know and see the other cameras we can walk up to that screen and check the other cameras out as well all right guys so let's take a look at the theater here and we're gonna look at everything and talk about what's coming up and how soon we're going to get on this theater all right so this is a 12 foot ceiling right here and that's an eight foot door just for scale so we're going to walk in here now it's actually going to be a ceiling a false ceiling in here that's going to be about eight eight and a half feet so in this wall we've already talked about it but if you haven't seen it this wall right here this partition between the hall and the theater is not going to exist acoustically acoustically the room goes from there to here so this is going to be a large base trap and a very, very, very effective base trap. So we're going to have outstanding base, really quick, tight base, which of course, quick and tight base is also a function or a, a characteristic of getting rid of peaks. But the room is just going to sound outstanding. We're going to have base trapping all up here. Now we also have a speaker going up there. So we're going to, you know, of course, we're not going to have any insulation in front of the speaker, but so uh and over here the same thing is going to be done over here in above the equipment room and here's our bundle coming down all of our speakers 12 gauge to all the bed layer speakers and 14 for the atmos we're set up to do 30 amp circuits so i can do uh 12240 or 30 two legs of 30 amp 120. so uh projector is going to go right there on the, the blocking it's going to be a jbc rs 2000 which is the professional version of the nx7 and we've got two outlets up there so we'll be able to actually do head-to-head -head comparisons with other projectors you know uh, with the i'll have it set up like on the remote where we can just switch between them so that'd be pretty cool for the channel all right and here this is where all the magic's going to happen see the spray foam is in now you'll notice right here you know we're, we don't have any insulation we had to take it all out up because we have a four inch in wall going in and the spray foam while it has a good r value the this is open cell open cell is comparable to r13 it's uh, it's not better than r13 
but what it does so well is it seals and that's where you get your fantastic energy bills from and like this house is 3200 heated we have a four ton ac unit where standard insulation would need like seven or eight tons of ac so there's a savings there and i mean it's just a much more comfortable house to be in but so we're sealed we don't have any seams in the plywood so we don't have to really worry about it and plus the in walls are all enclosed they're all triads triad doesn't do the open back in walls even on their stuff that's reasonably priced i mean there's still it's a sealed enclosed speaker now right here the same thing this is a six inch though for the wide so we actually had to shim it out a little bit now once we put our acoustic material in here and of course we're going to have you'll see that before we cover them the acoustics will be all in this room We'll have some on the ceiling. I mean, they'll be all over the place with treated uh, scatter plates on them, manipulating the sound the way we need to. So uh, it's gonna be nice and seamless. You won't see any speaker in this room. And over here, we've got a Triad Gold for the center. Triad Gold LCR, it's six inches deep, so we had to dig out a little bit right there. But this is actually an eight inch deep alcove that I built because I wanted a little insulation behind it. Now, after the sheetrock is done, we'll come in and build our columns in the corners right there, or our flanking sections for the mains. Those are also base traps. I mean, we've got a, an area right there that has to be angled anyway, because you know we've got an in wall. That doesn't mean we just stick it flat against the wall. That's how you get people thinking, oh, in walls aren't that good. It's because they're not installed properly. If you've seen any of my plans or if I've done your room, you know that we do not stick the mains just flush into the wall. We're gonna put them in there right because I just don't do that. I'm not gonna half-ass a room. This is actually a triad demo room. So anyone that comes to listen to this, of course, by reservation, anyone that comes to listen to it is gonna hear one of, if not the best sounding room they've ever heard. I mean, it's going to be a fantastic system. So we've got the Triad Gold LCR. Everything else in this room is going to be silver series. So we've got the silver, uh, silver sat in walls going here. And for the wide, you know, it's a six inch version. For the Atmos top and rear, so here's our rears here. You can see on that plate right there, there's another one over there. Those are gonna be the silver sats, actually an in-room speaker. It's gonna be on a bracket and it's gonna it's gonna be pulled forward. Those studs are not gonna affect it in any way. They're gonna be well clear of the horizontal dispersion. Same thing up there for the top fronts. You won't see those either, but those are also in rooms. So we're not doing the in-ceiling speakers up there. They're actually gonna, gonna be able to aim those perfectly. All right, then up here for top middle, we've got the Triad 9 sats. You can see their construction brackets are already up there. So that is, it's actually a very large speaker. It's uh, one of the only ones anywhere near its price range with a true 45 degree angle. So we're not putting some 20 degree angle speaker up there then having to rely on its off axis to try to get decent sound to the seats. We can actually angle 45 degrees and really get that on axis. And they're also a wide dispersion, not just something that claims wide dispersion. They are true wide dispersion. So we're gonna have fantastic sound from the top middles as well. And there's the silver line as well. Even though all the other silver lines are actually gonna have the same woofer and tweeter, those will be a little bit different, but they're still the same line. And you're not gonna hear any timber difference as objects are painting across the ceiling. All right guys, so here's the plan with the room. The sheet rockers are gonna be here in about five days. I've asked them to do this room first. So they're gonna come in here, they should be able to sheet rock this room in a day the following day you know mud it they're not going to do like a really fine mud job just one coat now half of the ceiling will be visible but most of all this sheetrock in here you're not going to see any of it it's all going to have fabric covering it acoustics so uh it's not going to take them long as soon as they get done i'm jumping in here i'm going to have i'm figuring two and a half to three weeks before they finish the whole house so i've got a whole house to do but this is the perfect time for me to jump in here and try to knock this room out and i know you're thinking what can you do in three weeks you know we see uh people working on home theaters and it takes them months one good thing about this room is we're using fabric mate fabric track so the old room and a lot of my clients will we do the older method which is using wood but i did my old room with the old method and it took three weeks i mean this is what i started with 
three weeks later, I had this minus carpet. We didn't have carpet yet, but all the acoustic panels, I mean, everything in the room, all the paint, the columns, you know, uh, the Starfield I did later, but Starfield and carpet, you take that out three weeks. But the problem is say, I want to change the speaker right here. Something happens, you know, to get to it, you know, you may have to pull columns out, you're pulling trim out, you know, it's, it's minor surgery to get that speaker out. With the fabric track system, you just pull it, you know, you can pull the fabric out and you can reinstall it. Now, you, and if you don't like the color, you know, if you do, we're gonna have a few different colors in here. If you don't like the color, you can change the color. So when you factor in time to install and you factor in, you know, the benefits down the road, it starts to make a lot of sense and the price really isn't that bad especially considering those things. So anyway, you're going to see that installed in here. You're going to see how it installs. And of course, you know, kind of a timeline. So you can see how fast this room goes together. And you know, it, it's got to go fast because I've got a whole house to build. So I don't have a choice. I've got to get after it. So screen wise, we're going to have Seymour screen excellence. It's going to be, I was planning on a 150. I'm sitting 13 feet back. So 130 inches THX recommended 40 degree viewing angle. I like 45 degrees, which is about 150 inch diagonal, 16 by nine. So uh, that's kind of pushing it for my RS2000. I may drop it down to like a 140, something like that. Still gonna be very immersive, but just give me a little more light output. I haven't quite decided yet. But we're also gonna do like a masking system on the Seymour screen. That's gonna be really cool. Can't wait to get it in this room. I've been using Seymour since, oh, probably 2000, 2009 is when I first got samples from Seymour with their XD screen, tested it out. I mean, from that point on, it's all I've used. That's all I've recommended. I mean, it's just great screen material, great price, and you can call up those guys you know, if you have any questions, you you know, they'll, they'll ask you some questions. How far are you sitting? What screen are you using? Ask you about the environment. They'll make suggestions to make sure that you get the right screen. All right, amplification. Of course, in here, we've got the tone winner. Tone winner is supplying all the amplification in this room. I've had a handful of clients I've sent over to them and a lot of friends that have started to use them and everyone so far has been very happy with the power they're getting for the money. So we've got that going on. And of course, seating, you know, seating really makes the experience when you're sitting down, you know, a nice, comfortable seat is everything. You don't want to be sitting in a lawn chair. Of course, in my old room, I had to sit in gaming chairs for about a month. We were happy to sit in those gaming chairs. And the first movie we watched was Interstellar. And I watched it from a gaming chair, my wife in another gaming chair next to me. And hey, we were good to go. But seating is gonna be Valencia, Tuscany. We're gonna have a four seater right here with a love in the middle. And that's actually my favorite configuration because I actually kind of like my wife. So the arm in the middle just doesn't work for us. Sometimes we have a kid jump, you know, in the middle with us too. We just kind of all jump on there and watch a movie. And also when you get rid of an eight inch arm, pushes those two seats or your heads a little closer to where you're only two feet apart so we can actually both be in the sweet spot and so that way for those two seats there's no difference in db level at least no audible difference nothing we can hear so for us both seats it's going to sound exactly the same even though one of us you might be you know you're two feet closer to one surround than another you're not going to notice that so that's another nitpicky reason i like the love configuration all right, guys, that's going to be it for this one. Check us out on Facebook. I do little updates here and there. You know, I'm working at the house. I'll snap a picture or something like that and give an update. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Like the video as well because YouTube likes it when you like a video. But hit that notification bell so you know the next updates come out. And after this house is done a few months down the road, we're going to get back just like before where we were hitting the educational series pretty hard, you know, how to set your room up and why we're doing the things we're doing because when you understand the why and it makes sense to you and it's explained in layman's terms it's, it sticks and that's gonna follow through you know this is an expensive hobby so we want to make sure we're getting you know everything out of our equipment so that's going to help you tremendously there go ahead and check out the videos we already have you know if you're new to home theater or even if you're not new just go look through them you're probably going to learn some things we're all still learning you know uh when you stop learning, that's not a good thing. All right, guys, I will see y'all soon. Later.